Before I get started creating anything in Illustrator, I normally sketch an idea. In the end, my artwork may not match my sketch 100%, but it keeps me on track and can help prevent me from changing my ideas in the middle of the project. Once I have a sketch, I look for the different shapes making the robot. Before I draw anything, I want to make sure I have a white fill and a black stroke. Pressing the D key on my keyboard will reset my fill and stroke to black and white. I use the rectangle tool to create the head. After aligning my cursor with the center of the head, I make another rectangle for the neck. By holding the Alt key down, my shape will be created outward from the center. Pressing Ctrl Y will take me to an outline view, which makes it easier to align shapes to each other by hiding all the strokes and fills from my view. This is helpful because it gives me the basic information when working with shapes. Think of the view as the bones or structure of your artwork. I use the ellipse tool to draw on some robot ears. I align my cursor to the center of the head and again hold the Alt key down while creating the circle. I just eyeball the size of the robot ear. I could change it later if I wanted. The pink line that appears is a smart guide and I use it to align shapes to each other. The arm is made up of two rectangles and a circle. I can press Ctrl Y again to toggle back to preview. I send some of the shapes to the back by clicking on the shape and selecting Arrange, then Send to Back. I want the shoulder to be on top. After a quick adjustment to the torso, I copy and paste the whole arm. I right click on the arm and select Transform and then Reflect. I make sure the axis is set to vertical and then click OK. Now all that's left is to align the arm to the body. To finish up, I create the lower body from rectangles. When the lower body is created, I'll look over my robot and make any position adjustments to get it looking close to my sketch. After getting the basic form of my robot, I want to make any adjustments to the different parts. Right away, I resize the head. Next, I move the ears into place and then move the whole head down. I adjust the neck, but I could have left it alone since it was in the back. I'm going to use the direct selection tool to adjust live corners. I could eyeball the roundness of the corner, but I prefer to enter a value so that the corners match each other. Even the smallest amount of roundness can have a big impact on a sharp corner. Everything looks good here, but I want to change the lower body. I feel that it gets a little busy in that area. I know this strays from my original sketch, but I feel like it would match the overall look of the robot if I use a bigger shape and rounded the corners. There, that looks better. There are extra shapes hiding under the artwork, so going into outline mode reveals these shapes. I can then easily select them and delete them. By using live corners and simple transform actions, I finally have my robot the way I want it before I apply any other details. Adding details to the robot will help give it some character. I'll first give it some eyes by creating some circles. What I like to do when creating eyes is to place my cursor in the center of the head and then hold Alt and Shift while dragging from the center. This will give me a perfectly round eye shape. I then copy the eye and press Ctrl F to paste it to the front. Now I have two eyes. I use my arrow keys to move one eye to the right and the other eye to the left. My robot also needs a mouth. I make a simple mouth from a rectangle shape by adjusting the corners of the rectangle. Next, I create antennas coming out of the ears. 
I make narrow rectangles and put them into position. I didn't like the circle at the top from my original sketch, so I curved the ends of each antenna instead. I add a small rectangle to the head for a bit of detail. I adjust the rectangle by using the direct selection tool to move a couple anchor points to the side. For the hands, I use rectangles with rounded corners. With symmetrical pieces, it's sometimes easier to adjust one and copy and paste it to the other side. To show some separation for the joints, I use the line tool and add a line across the arms. I create more lines for the torso. I create a small decorative piece to place on the torso of the robot by using the polygon tool. Like the previous shape tools, I just click and drag the shape out. I could also single click the artboard to bring up a small panel, giving me the ability to make specifications for my polygon shape. I'll use this panel to create a triangle. I'll set my sides to 3, then press OK, and resize the triangle to make them into feet. I'm not too happy with the feet. The feet look too small. I'm going to select one and resize it by making it wider. I round the sharp corners and then I change its height. To make sure I have the stroke at one point, I select everything and change it using the stroke panel. It isn't necessary, but I want to see a complete outline version of my robot with the same line weight used. Let me quickly talk about how the stroke can be affected when scaling objects. I have two squares that both have a one point stroke weight. When I use the transform controls and change the size of the bottom square, the stroke weight changes. I don't want that to happen. This can be really annoying when working on complex illustrations. So luckily Illustrator lets me turn this feature off. I'll navigate to the scale tool and double click the icon to open up a panel. In this panel, I just want to pay attention to the option Scale Strokes and Effects. It's found near the bottom. I uncheck the box to turn this feature off. Now, when I scale the same shape, the stroke weight will not scale with it. Coloring the robot will be the final step. Illustrator offers many options when it comes to coloring. I like to begin by putting in a base color for all the shapes. At this point, it's a little like a coloring book. I added white circles to the eyes to act as a highlight. After I apply color to all the parts, I use the gradient panel to give the color a little more depth. I use linear gradients on most of the body, but in the shoulder I applied radial gradients so that I could get a highlight. I feel like the stroke doesn't look as good, so I remove them from my artwork. And after that, my robot is finished. This robot was created using basic shapes and basic techniques. There are many other tools that can be used to create more complex illustrations that will be mentioned in further lessons. Looking at the robot created today, it's a good example of what can be achieved with basic features found in Illustrator.